Imagine that you've moved to a new place and you don't know the language or the culture, and because of that, you don't really have contacts to find a job. That is the reality for many people arriving here, a reality often exacerbated in terms of difficulty for many women coming to Canada. Now, those challenges will be addressed today at the fourth annual Diversity at Work conference organized by Skills for Change. Tanashi Mafukidze is the leader in residence for immigrant women in leadership at Skills for Change. She was born in Zimbabwe, grew up in Burundi and Kenya, came to Canada as refugee in 2001, and she's with me in studio now to talk about what she's gone through and how she is trying to help women who find themselves in a similar position. Good morning. Good morning. I want to talk about that title, Leadership and Residence, in just a moment, but tell us your own story of what it was like when you arrived here in 2001. Uh, so in 2001, I uh, came to Canada while well, I was actually a teenager at the time, so I was 15. I, I moved here with my mom, who's a single mom, and my younger brother, who at the time was just a little boy. Now he's 19. Mm. Um, and uh, the challenge for me was um, I had finished high school at 15, but I unfortunately could not afford to go to university. So I think uh, the challenge was really navigating the system as to how do I actually access post-secondary options um, as a refugee woman in Canada. Um, that was really difficult. And at the time, I think in, in Canada, we were not um, uh, allowing or at least uh, immigrants and well refugees didn't have access to um, student loans. Mm. And uh, I guess I fell into that bucket. I, d I couldn't access uh, student loans at the time. So it was, it was really difficult having to pay your way through university in a country that you don't have a network. And I always say that's the one thing that uh, is needed when you move to Canada, a network. What was the most perplexing thing for you, given the absence of that network? I mean, the thing that you found just most difficult and, 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 and baffling? Well, to be honest, I think... Um, the well, the way I understand Canada to work now is that uh, not much moves unless you know someone, mm. and uh, and I and I guess it is uh, the story anywhere in the world as well. So when uh, particularly when a woman comes to Canada and she doesn't have that uncle or uh, auntie who they can call and ask for that summer job or that job they need to take care of their family, uh, it's likely. I mean, it's very difficult to actually get around that. What do you hear from women in the position that you're in now about some of those things that they're going through? Well, the difficult thing is uh, particularly a lot of women have children. And so accessing, um, first of all, employment uh, can be a challenge because daycare costs are expensive. And uh, so, you know, they have to decide what role should they take, especially when they're single women. So that's been one of the challenges we've seen in the women we spoke to uh, with this um uh, leader residence position. And then um, we also have women who uh, speak about the whole Canadian experience. So they were, and my mother was a woman like that. She worked in international banking for close to 15 years. Mm. And, uh, you know, you come to the country and hope that, you know, you can go ahead and work in your profession, but it's not that easy. And they talk about the so-called Canadian experience and how difficult it is to get around that. What is your role as the leader in residence in terms of helping those women um, try and figure out a path forward? Okay, so my role um, really is to uh, bring dialogue to this issue. So um, a lot of the times when we speak about immigration, we tend to, uh, you know, lump men and women in the same bucket. And yet when you look at uh, research, uh, you see that women, immigrant women particularly, fall behind uh, immigrant men when it comes to employment and economic prosperity when, when we get here. And so I think uh, my role really is to uh, try and gauge a conversation amongst different circles and uh, see how we can sort of bust those myths that exist around immigrant women or um, bring to light some of the challenges or remove the barriers that obviously exist around this topic. Bringing to light is one thing. Actually changing something is something completely different. So how do you do that? I mean, aside from a conversation, um, how do you try and actually change that system? I think it's actually quite easy, and I think having that dialogue is part of changing the system. I think, uh, you know, when men are involved in understanding some of these barriers, uh, they're allies, right? And I think having them a part of the conversation is definitely key in terms of decisions are made um, in, in boardrooms and um, at various uh, decision-making tables. And so I think uh, it's important to have some type of discourse around that, and that impacts the way we hire. Uh, it changes our mind about 
how we uh, create policy, uh, whether it's in the workplace or uh, just in general in terms of, uh, you know, our policies in Canada. So I think uh, the conversation is the startup piece that allows people to then, um, you know, commit to something. Do you believe that you have willing partners? Because we know that glass ceilings exist in various capacities um, and you have to have somebody who is willing to help smash that glass ceiling. You know, to be honest, I actually think that we are moving in a really good place. Like, right. I think, um, especially I speak of men as a as an ally, uh, because I think, um, you know, uh, it is quite a patriarchal society. And I think it's important to um, to engage, uh, you know, everyone really on, on how do we create uh, a barrier-free society for anyone, uh, immigrant women in this case specifically. So I think uh, at the end of the day, we are actually moving the needle on this issue. At the end of this discussion, in terms of this conference, what would you hope the kind of top line issue would be that people would be talking about? I hope at the end, uh, because this conference actually engages uh, private, public sector, and nonprofit um, uh, uh, professionals, and I think I think one thing that can come out of it is a is a clear commitment uh, from each and everyone uh, to think about what it is that they can do in terms of removing a barrier for an immigrant woman. Uh, if they're in a hiring um, a role, I, it, I'd love to think that they can walk away, you know, going back to their organization and thinking, how can we engage immigrant women? In, in our workplace. And will you ask them to specifically commit to something? Yes, I will actually. Good. <laughs> and it's not just talk. It's actually somebody with something written down saying this is what we're going to do. Exactly. Excellent. Thank you for coming in this morning. Thank you.